Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Ralph Flexions deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is not a typo, we're playing with Reflections of Lejara, a 5-mana enchantment from Kaldheim, saying as Reflections enters a battlefield we have to choose a creature type, which is going to be Elf in our case, hence the deck's name, and whenever we cast a spell of the chosen type we get to copy that spell, and a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. So why did we choose Elves to go with Reflections? Well, the Elf Tribe has natural synergy with Reflections, as it provides mana acceleration to get Reflections in play ahead of schedule, thanks to cards like Jaspero Sentinel, Sculptor of Winter, Woodland Mystic and Lenor Visionary, even our Lord provides additional mana, and then we can also leverage that extra mana once we're going off with Reflections, and we start drawing extra cards with our two Visionaries, we've got Lenor Visionary and Draga Visionary that draw a card when they enter the battlefield, as well as Realm Walker that lets us play Elves of the top, and eventually we can finish the game with Elvish Warmer Master's activated ability, giving our elves plus 2 plus 2 and death touch. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck here at 1 mana. We mentioned Jasper Sentinel as a mana accelerant. It's a 1 2 elf with reach, and we can tap it alongside another untapped creature we control to add 1 mana of any color, so it can also fix our mana. At 2 mana, we've got Elvish Warmaster. This is one of the centerpieces of the deck. A 2 mana 2 2 elf warrior, and whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 1 1 a green elf warrior creature token, and then we can only trigger this ability once each turn, and for 7 mana, Elves we control get plus 2 plus 2 and death touch until end of turn, so a great way to close out the game. We've got 4 copies of Sculptor of Winter alongside 16 Snow Basics and Fabled Passage to search them up, so we can untap our snow lands to essentially add 1 extra mana, so this can help us ramp into our 4 drops on turn 3, which is pretty important when we can potentially ramp into a Canopy Tactician, and then also just a 2-2 two -two creature that can attack and block, and then we've got 2 copies of Woodland Mystic. Now this is one of those arena exclusive cards that you can only play in best of one, but if you're interested in playing it in best of three, you can easily replace it with Masked Vandal to deal with artifacts or enchantments, or one of the many other two mana elves like Tajuru Paragon or Wildborn Preserver. Then at three mana, we've got the full playset of Lenor Visionary, which is perfect, as it can ramp into a turn four Reflections, and is also great once we have Reflections in play, as it will draw additional cards. And then Realm Walker, which is a shapeshifter changeling, so it also counts as an elf. We name elf as it enters the battlefield, and then we can take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and cast elves from the top of our deck, which can also provide a ton of extra card advantage. Then at four mana, we've got the full playset of Canopy Tactician. This provides a nice anthem effect for our elves, giving them plus one plus one, and and also taps to add triple green, so this is a great card to double with our reflections or to copy with the Marit of the Frost, which we'll get to in a second. And then we also have the full playset of Joraga Visionary as another elf that draws a card when it enters a battlefield. A little bit overpriced at 4 mana, we could also play the 3 mana Gladewalker Ritualist, which is one of the theme booster changelings, which could also fit in the deck nicely, but being guaranteed to draw a card when it enters a battlefield I think makes up for it. And then at 5 mana we've got the full playset of Reflections of Lejara, which is the centerpiece of the deck, and we're happy to draw multiple copies. And finally, two copies of Morit of the Frost, a 5 mana 0 0 legendary snow creature shapeshifter with changeling, so also counts as an elf. And we may have Morit of the Frost enter the battlefield as a copy of any permanent we control, except it's a legendary and snow in addition to its other types. And if it's copying a creature, it also gets two plus one plus one counters. So this can also copy our reflections of Lejara, although we do have to be careful because we can't copy multiple reflections with Morit because of the legendary rule, but copying one reflections and maybe one canopy tactician goes a long way and of course can copy any number of our other elves as well and then going over the mana base we do need snow lands to enable our sculptor of winter so we've got four snow covered islands 12 snow covered forests four of the blue green pathway and four copies of fabled passage which also has a little bit of synergy with our realm walker as we can potentially shuffle our deck to once again reveal an elf on top of our library so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. Turn to Woodland Mystic into Visionary, which will hopefully ramp us into Reflections with another Visionary to follow up and draw a bunch of cards. So we can fetch up an island here. Still need to draw an extra land that comes into play untapped if we want to ramp into Reflections. Opponent on a green-white Yorion deck and a Rune of Might. Alright, the runes also have good synergy with Yorion. 
So hopefully we draw into an extra land here. All right, there we go. So next turn we can play Reflections and maybe even a second Reflections before we start playing our Elves. Opponent on Bands. And their opponent foretells a card. All right, so if they're setting up a Sweeper here, Reflections is not a bad play. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to play a second Reflections before we start playing Visionaries. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have a card like Elspeth Conquers Death to Exile or Enchantment. And then I want to get a second blue source in case we draw more Ritz. Alright, it's going to be a Runeforged Champion instead. So that can search up another Rune. Another Rune of Might. Alright. So, Canopy Tactician is tempting, but I think I would rather still play another Reflections here. I guess there was no real need to fetch in case we picked up a Realm Walker. Although there's something to be said for thinning out the deck, so we're more likely to draw spells. A rune of Flights on the Plains instead of the Champion. I guess playing around removal here. Although they had another Rune of Flight for Champion. So now a 3-4 Flyer. All right, how deep do we want to go? Do we play another Reflections? I feel like we should probably just play some of our Elves now, and then next turn we can maybe go Reflections plus another Elf. So, Tactician's pretty bad if our opponent does have a Sweeper lined up here. Maybe start things off with a Visionary, and then if I draw into a land, I can still play another 4-drop afterwards. Now Reflections is also good against counter spells, since it happens on cast, so even if they counter the original, we still get the copies. Alright, so even though I could play another Visionary, I'm kind of tempted to save that one, and just for now play Sculptor of Winter. In case my opponent does have a Doom Scar waiting for us. And then next turn, if they don't have a Sweeper, playing Tactician could just be lethal. So yeah, once we get Reflections going, our deck does some pretty crazy things. Opponents did not cast any of their cards end of turn. So it does seem like they're just gonna attack and Doomscar to wipe the board. But we've got a decent follow-up. So I'm not too concerned. Morit can also copy Reflections. Another Rune of Light. So once they play Yorion, they'll get to draw a bunch of cards. And there's Doomscar, as expected. Alright, so where do we want to begin? I can play Morit for 5 mana, copy Reflections and 2 lands. And that doesn't let me play Tactician, unless I just want to Moritz and copy three lands here. Then I can still play Tactician afterwards. Although it feels like I want to play Tactician on a full board to get kind of the immediate effect, so we don't run into another Sweeper. Could also play Visionary, see what we draw. Or go Warmaster into Visionary, that's not bad. And hit my land drop. Alright, let's do that. Because keep in mind, if Morit copies a land, we can't copy the same land, otherwise it uh, will be sacrificed to the legendary rule. But alright, looks like our opponent didn't have another sweeper, and just going Warmaster into Visionary with double reflections was good enough to prompt a concession. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. It's lacking some ramp, so hopefully we can draw into one of our ramp creatures in a turn or two so we can play Reflections on turn four. But turn two Warmaster, hopefully we'll draw something to play by turn three. And then, of course, Reflections is the card we want to have every game. Up against the blue-green. Alright, so some sort of kicker deck. Sadly, no play here. But should be able to attack with Warmaster safely. Opponent might be holding an into the Royal. So that's also pretty effective at bouncing my reflections. So I don't know if I'll be able to afford to wait until we play reflections to play visionary. Probably just gonna run it out on turn four. Verasol as a 3-3. Alright, there's Lenor Visionary. I guess we'll still play a Juranga for now, just to be a little bit more mana efficient. And it also lines up better against a 3-3. Alright, so next turn we can Reflections, and if it sticks around, we can follow up with maybe a Lenor Visionary plus Woodland Mystic, or maybe play second Reflections first. All right, opponents also ramping. Get in with visionary. Inscription gonna bounce some of our creatures, that's fine. As long as Reflection stays around. Sir opponent does get some very large illusion tokens. So as much as I want to play another Reflections, I think we should make some Elf Tokens here with the War Master so we can Chum Block. So we can go War Master into a Lenor Visionary. And Sentinel, an extra blocker here. That's okay, I think. Then next turn I can still go Reflections plus a 2-drop. Alright. So we shouldn't die here. And every turn we get to untap with Reflections, we can pull further and further ahead. Double Throne activation, our opponent's setting up for something big. So time for Reflections, plus, I guess, Joranga Visionary is fine. And draw some more cards. And eventually we can close out the game with Elvish Warmaster. And not the Reflections. Why not? Don't think I necessarily need to reach creatures back, so we'll play another Elf here. And we can tap some 1-1s one with our Just Sparrow Sentinel. Canopy Tactician also looking mighty fine. So not hitting my chances, although maybe there's a card that can like bounce my entire board. Or somehow give the opponent's creatures evasion that could get us. Morasa Sproutling. That's fine. Can get back inscription. Although it doesn't really feel impactful enough. So 
I guess we can play Nother Reflections and then play Canopy Tactician and I'm pretty sure that's lethal. Just gotta watch out for maybe a Bounce Spell. So all our elves get plus four, plus four. And it's time to attack. Into the royal bounces one of them. Yo. Still pretty sure we have lethal. Opponent's got six blockers. Yeah, they're super dead. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a totally fine hand. Go to our snow covered island to synergize with Sculptor of Winter. And potentially ramps us into a turn 3 canopy tactician. So, definitely into the idea of playing Sculptor over Warmaster. Facing Kazandu Valley, so maybe a green red adventure stompy deck. And a Brushfire Elemental. So, luckily, they didn't have Stomp to kill the sculptor and we get to play a tactician here after doing some untapping so hopefully tactician survives and then next turn we'll have access to a ton of mana can go war master into realm walker great horns gonna mutate onto the elemental so this is a red green Mutate Landfall deck, which can hit pretty hard, as we see here. And we won't be able to chum block the Brushfire Elemental with our tokens all that easily. So, step one. I guess now we can play Realm Walker first. Since we'll be able to play War Master and another Elf afterwards if we don't hit something off Realm Walker first. Can also shuffle with Fabled Passage to maybe reveal an elf on top of our library. And sure, I'll get an island here, but given that we have Sculpture to untap our lands, it doesn't matter too much. And then Visionary is not bad, since it can actually block. All right, and then I guess we'll hit for three. So now we're starting to accumulate more cards that can actually block the Brushfire Elemental. So hopefully we don't die to one big attack. And then next turn we'll finally play War Master to start generating some tokens and eventually use the activated ability to close out the game. Field of Ruin, another way the opponent has to enable Landfall twice. So if I were to double block, they could Field of Ruin and pump this up to a 7-8. They could also have an Amber Cleave for all we know. So, yeah, I don't think we should double block, but I'll definitely just jump to preserve my life total. Damage happens. So probably no Amber Cleave then. And a Kazandu Mammoth. That's fine. Cleansing Wildfire will shuffle my deck, but plenty of basic lands to search, since no basics still count as basic lands. Murat of the Frost can copy Canopy Tactician here, which is pretty sweet. So how about we play Warmaster into Murat? And then probably attack. Opponent's at nine. So if we can survive this following turn, we should be fine. 
happy enough trumping with our elf token. Another brush fire. So that's a whole bunch of landfall triggers. And they can get one more with Field of Ruin. So what's the worst case scenario? I guess they can't quite Field of Ruin and Ember Cleave, so that would be one concern. So I just need to play around maybe a few extra landfall triggers. So I could put Canopy Tactician in front of Brushfire. There's a chance it dies. And then Elf Token will jump too. And hopefully that's good enough. They might have other instant speed ways to enable landfall, like a Roiling Regrowth. But in that case, I think I'm still fine with these blocks. And yep, there's a Regrowth. So that's two more landfall triggers. But we should still have lethal on the way back. So not too concerned here. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Can curve into a turn 3 Canopy Tactician if Sculptor of Winter survives. And then hopefully we'll draw into our reflections or some of our card draw. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Forests. And Reclaim the Wastes. Well, no lack of Sculptors here. Bubble Snare will keep Sculptor tapped, but not before it untaps one of our lands. Realmwalker, also an excellent draw here. This opponent playing a kicker deck finds Roost of Drakes. So we'll kick things off with Realmwalker. See what's on top. Could say Fabled Passage for next turn to shuffle our deck. And then drawing an extra Fabled Passage with Realm Walker in place, probably still fine. So kick through the Drakes, triggers Chronicler, makes the Drake token one of many. Start playing some free spells. Alright, we'll just play this as a blue source, play Visionary. And that's not a bad turn. Next turn we can... Do I want to attack here? Probably not. Next turn we get to play War Master, maybe Moritz copying Canopy Tactician. And things are very quickly getting out of hand. Kick Jace. Can provide a bit of card advantage. Do love data analysis. Where's the next puzzle? Keeps a card on top. And the second Jace is gonna zero to draw land so it doesn't lose any loyalty. Another War Master on top, sure. So we should have enough mana to do all the things we want to do. Play another War Master. Fetch up an island. And probably want to start getting aggressive. The three power creatures don't have a great attack, so I can probably play one Sculptor.
but all the four powered creatures are gonna get in there. And do we want to tank Jace or just go face? I think we just go face at this point. And next turn we should be able to close out the game pretty easily with the Warmaster's ability. So even without reflections, our deck is capable of doing some powerful things thanks to Tactician providing a lot of mana and Realmwalker providing the card advantage this time around. Find Gecko into Sproutling. Can get back. A kicker card here. But I don't think my opponent will untap another turn. Could play another Morit, but we've already copied Tactician, so I wouldn't be able to make another one. But yeah, we'll just attack with all, activate our Warmaster. And that should be game. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got a Mystic into turn three Tactician and then Warmaster to start going wide, which is also great with Tactician and Realmwalker for card advantage. So we've got all the pieces. Might fetch up an island here since we do need Double blue for Moritz, eventually. Ooh, Reflections would be nice if we can cast it. All their opponents playing mono red, so they might have some ways to deal with our creatures in the meantime. Seize the spoils, alright. Discards Satyr's Cunning. and cast Satyr's Cunning, so this could be some sort of transmogrify deck trying to cheat a big creature in play and then plays a whole bunch of token makers to then uh, sacrifice to the transmogrify. But for now we'll play Tactician. And then next turn we could play Reflections plus maybe another creature. Another Seize the Spoils, discards a mountain. And Fire Prophecy, also a card that's often played in Transmogrify decks, so you can put the creature you want to cheat into play back on the bottom. Alright, still get to play Reflections here, thanks to our Mystic. Next turn I could play more Ritz, which can also copy Reflections once, and then maybe copy a land with the second one. Or we can play another Reflections first, which is slightly more effective maybe. Yeah, we do have a lot of options here. If I go with more Ritz, then I can also play Warmaster, which is probably slightly better here. Don't need to be too greedy. So one copy is Reflection. And one copy is a land. And then Warmaster triggers itself. Alright, so next turn we'll maybe start going off with Realmwalker. Alright, their opponent scoops it up, so I guess they couldn't find their Transmogrify in time, and Double Reflections was just too daunting. So overall our deck did quite well today, we didn't face too many tier 1 decks, there's definitely cards that can give us some problems like Ugin the Spirit Dragon which can just wipe our board including our enchantment, which is kind of our way to beat sweeper effects, 
and uh, of course there's other answers to our enchantment out there like binding of the old gods elspeth conquers death so any deck that's packing those is going to be an issue for us but otherwise we can definitely do some cool and powerful things using some underappreciated cards so that's going to do it for today's gameplay I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.